technology we call it. And instead of, remember I talked about application acceleration? I know your application. Well, now what we've done is we've emulated the black level protocol for this. And so we allow you to bring it back here and put it into a NAS, a storage, uh, say, a storage area network. And then this box will project outwards. I have this, this now, I have this, this, I have it. To a counterpart, remember, it's symmetrical on the other side. There's a little piece of code here at the remote branch. And he will represent that disk. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. What that means is if this line gets disconnected, previously if this is disconnected, you won't see the disk anymore. But because this guy says, I'm here, 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 then the user will always see it. It's always there. Now we do something called write authoritative and read authoritative. That means I can actually act on behalf of the system back there and say, yeah, I got it, I got it, yeah, you want to change that? Okay, no problem, yeah, we can do that. Why? Because all that data still resides here. Remember I said before, I record everything, I keep everything. Five minutes, I need five more hours. Okay, no, okay. Um, so, we allow you to bring that disk back here, we allow you to keep this, the application over here, so everybody's happy. Your auditors are happy, my data is protected. Your user is happy, my responsiveness is right here in front of my customer, whatever that customer happens to be. Eventually, brand new technology never existed before. People like uh, Disney, uh, Disney has movies they develop all over the world, and they want to they're developing it everywhere, but they were getting a lot of the pieces stolen. That happens in many organizations. You know that. And so they said, we need to keep our data back in California where it's protected, and that's what they're doing. Now, imagine when you do animation, it's very heavy CAD CAM. You need that application local for responsiveness, but the data now resides back in California, as one example. Software as a service. Software as a service means you're accessing through a public network. You're going through Global PLDT, uh, AT&T, Verizon, somebody else. You don't control that. You have no idea what your response is going to be on any particular day, right? But you want to use it because there's economics behind using software as a service. You may want to put your application in the cloud across the network you don't own. How can you guarantee transport across that network? and ensure it's the same as your current network. The way that we do that is we take our technology, we've been doing this all along, really good, we make it efficient, we reduce the amount of bandwidth. But I can't guarantee you, a river bed, that you're gonna have excellent performance across a public network. So what we did is we made this product with a company called Akamai. If you know Akamai, Akamai is what makes YouTube better. When you were here in Manila looking at YouTube and wondering, why is this so good? Because it's coming from California, it's because it's here in Manila. Right? And that's what the Akamai Network does. They have, what is it, 100,000 servers around the world, 72 countries, 1,100 service providers. They are everywhere. And all of those 100,000 servers are here, 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 here. What that allows them to do back at corporate headquarters is say, the fastest path to Manila, the fastest path to Mofanga, the fastest path to Cebu is this way. Because it isn't naturally the shortest path you might think it is. And so they give you business-grade internet. Okay, I guess next. <laughs> um, so that is an application, uh, software as a service that we provide. You don't buy anything, right? You don't have to buy anything. It's a subscription. You don't even have to buy something. Just like you subscribe to Google uh, Plus, sometimes you subscribe to Office 365, you subscribe to Salesforce.com, you can subscribe to Riverbed to get that service all across the network, anywhere in the world, and you'll have the same performance, 60 times faster than anything else. Okay, public backup, putting your storage into the cloud. Let's say you have your storage, you want to put it in your private cloud, you want to put it in public cloud. Let's use Amazon as an example. Next slide, please. Next, next, next. <coughs> One more. Next. Okay. So what happens is there's a box in the data center. When you do your, uh, your backups, your storage, you're going to create, you're going to target it. Where's my target? Where am I backing up to? I'm going to back up to this box. This box is Riverbed. This is asymmetrical technology. I don't need it on both sides. Why? Because you can't control the other side. And so we accept all the data here through something that we call white water. Next, click. Okay. We transport it against the public, at first, the public network. We reduce it by 95%, as I told you before. We encrypt it with SSL version 3 so that nobody can read that information. Your auditors will love that. They said, good, you're protecting the data as it goes across. It is now going to Amazon, maybe the SME service from Amazon, or maybe it's going to Rackspace. 
It is deposited, deposited in AES encrypted form. Nobody at Amazon can read it. Your auditors love that. You now have public cloud storage, very cheap, being rented. Let's say if you know storage, I have 30 platters, platter, big disk that goes on top of the storage device. We reduce it to one. So when we take this 30 that you had over here, you back it up here, it becomes one over here. Not only did I save you money, but I reduced the size of everything. This makes public storage very, very viable. Next thing. Again, 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 we have it for 85% of all the stuff that you have out there. Um, virtual devices. If you have a public cloud, a private cloud, a private device, how do I balance my applications between the three at any given time? You would use next. I wish I had the clicker. Um, okay, keep going. All right, you have a virtual ADC. Because you have a cloud environment, you should always talk virtual because you don't control those environments. I want to fire up when I need it, wherever I want it, a virtual device. And so a virtual ADC is something that you actually should be looking for, and that is something that your business provides. It does things like, as an example, I'm going to take 10 seconds to do this. Uh, let's take an example. An intelligent ADC not only says, where do I go, public cloud, private cloud, but it actually says, you know what, somebody's shopping, let's take an e-commerce, not a good example for you, but it's a good example that's illustrated, is, okay, this shopper who's surfing my website now deposited something in the shopping cart. Ooh. Let's give him more bandwidth, because he has tra traversed from somebody surfing to somebody buying. Give him more bandwidth, give him more power. Ooh. It's more than 100 US dollars. Give them a dedicated server back in the public cloud where I actually have something offloaded. That's possible with a virtual ABC and that's something that we do today. So think about the power of something that deep inspection is next, please. Next slide, next slide. Keep going. I'm not even gonna go through this. We actually have asymmetrical technology, next slide. Doesn't have to be symmetrical. And then the last thing is, I'm going to stop right here. The last thing is the ability to uh, actually see what you're doing. So we have an application that's embedded in all these virtual devices or physical devices that we call Cascade. Cascade has the ability to capture everything that's happening. Where are we capturing everything? We will let your network operations people play back anything, even a voice over IP call. I can actually take a voice over IP call and play it back. I can actually look at who's coming from where. They're coming from Singapore, they're coming from the United States, they're coming from Manila. What applications are they using? Of the applications that they're using, which ones are slow? Of the ones that are slow, where are the applications that are slow? Which screen are they actually slow on? Wouldn't you love to know that when you're going across a hybrid network? This is one of the few applications in the world that you can take to live. I don't care where you are in the cloud, I don't care where you're on the private network, I don't care what application you're using, I'm going to tell you how well it's working now so anyway, these are a lot of the different technologies you'll need to be using hybrid cloud. I'm going to be around in the booth outside at the Riverbed booth with ATI. Please come and talk to me. Um, I've got more stories I can do in three days. But in your particular, I actually did work in the government for a number of years back in the United States. So I have stories I can relate to you as well. So thank you for your time. Uh, please come and see us. Thank you.